The game's up, you know. London always finds out, sooner or later. And with the wall coming down, it won't be later. But does it really matter now? We spent our whole lives fighting this damn stupid war. And what do we have to show for it? Bloody noses and grazed knees. The idealists believe otherwise. Some of them are saying there'll be no more secrets from now on. But you and I both know that's not true. I have loved this city. She's been good to me. I shan't forget her. Still, it's a good opportunity to wipe the slate clean. Who's going to care about state secrets, double agents, all of that, when the Kremlin collapses? That was an extract from a graphic novel originally published as The Coldest City, which is now a major motion picture called Atomic Blonde. The point I'm making here is that we are familiar with graphic novels, mangas and some web comics being made into TV shows, films and animations. However, there are a few of us who aren't aware that these niche things have also won awards. In this video I will be addressing who has won awards within my practice. Since I'm wanting to pursue a career in it, I will be focusing on graphic novels and the two that I will be looking at in this video are Monstrous and Saga. Both graphic novels have been nominated for the Hugo Awards for Best Graphic Story. The winner, however, for the Best Graphic Story for 2018 and 2017 was Monstrous, and Saga was a runner-up. Let's start with Monstrous. Monstrous is set in a world full of steampunk horror and art deco, and a story of a survivor of a cataclysmic war between humans and Arcanics, Maker Half-Wolf is in search of answers about her past, while this monster within her begins to awaken. I would like to compare the art style of Monstrous with another artist, but I think its art style is rather unique and original. Although, there is one artist that I am strangely reminded of, and that is Gustav Klimt. One of Klimt's iconic pieces is The Kiss. Klimt has a mix between realism and flat patterns, using a variety of colours, predominantly yellow and gold. Monstrous uses a similar palette with other colours such as blues or greens, however they are darkened and rustic. This gives a more dark and sinister tone to the comic, giving it more of a horrific atmosphere, whereas Clint expresses his work with bright colours, making it more vivid and glowing. The colours play a more important part in both styles. Monstrous is about a girl with a forgotten past and this monster growing inside her, and throughout the comic it speaks to her and tries to consume others in its wake. So portraying the sense of eeriness with a darker colour palette makes the feeling of the comic more real. However, with Klimt's The Kiss, it's about passion, love and warmth, so bright vivid colours are more crucial. Especially with the strong significance of yellow and gold, it makes the image feel warm and romantic, giving a positive atmosphere to the viewer. Moving on to our other comic, called Saga. Saga is about a series of characters on this roller coaster of a journey. What makes the story interesting and gripping is its diversity in characters. The genre is sci-fi, so you could say it has aliens in it. However, all the races don't feel alien. In fact, it feels rather normal. A good comparison about being alien is Laura Walton's Pretending to be Human comic, which tells a short narrative of feeling alien as a human. The difference between Saga and Pretending to be Human is Saga is about unity with other diverse characters, whereas Pretending to be Human is about being comfortable within your own skin and being yourself. Both comics use bright vivid colours, but Pretending to be Human uses a set colour palette of red, orange and blue, alternating with different shades of the same colour. 
Saga uses a variety of colours to demonstrate different moods, atmospheres and diversity. The illustrations remind me of Julian Opia's work with its colours and tonal shading. At the start of Walton's comic shows the protagonist working at a costume shop. The colours used are somewhat cold to represent this feeling of being uncomfortable. As the character is on her way home from her shift, the comic gets warmer as it shows that she's a lot more comfortable being herself when she takes off her skin. As an extra added bonus, I wanted to talk about a magazine called Ocomely. I personally have never heard about this magazine, but I saw it in my local train station, so I thought I'd give it a little read. In this issue, the magazine focuses on love, whether it be about friends, your significant other, or family. It shares spotlights for musicians and artists along with stories, cultures, curiosities and ideas. Apart from the eye-catching cover, what caught my eye more about this magazine was an article in it called What I Learned From Wales. Here's a little snippet. As a child, obsessed with adventures, novels and atlases, I remember how vast the new world seemed. The unknown is enticing, for it allows us to dream, to imagine our own visions of western lands beyond the sea. In my late adolescence, I set off, at first exhilarated by every border crossing. Over the years, wanderlust gave way to world weariness. The novelty wore off, differences became similarities, unfamiliarity morphed into recognition. In some ways, this is a good thing. As the world becomes smaller, we develop cross-cultural understanding. But as the world becomes smaller, so might our imagination. Gone is the allure of sailing to the edge of the world. It's a well-trodden path. America was long ago discovered, men have walked on the moon, and seemingly every journey has been documented and archived. Dream recollection is seldom interesting to anyone other than the dreamer, but in last nights, I returned to a place I've been to many times before, a place where I learnt to dream again. I was floating in the middle of the deep ocean, above the great void, though I wasn't alone there. A whale surfaced meters from me, exposing its tail before returning to the depths. This dream has come and gone over the years, re-emerging in different forms. Sometimes the water was turbulent. On other days, I'm looking down at migrating whales from a cliff edge or watching them from a beach. The protagonist is always the same. The whale, close yet distant. And that wraps everything up pretty much. I chose that article as it was beautifully written and rather emotional. If you want to read more of what I learned from Wales, please give issue 47 of Oak Only a good read, as most of the articles in there are rather inspiring. I also want to thank Laura Walton for letting me feature her Pretending to be Human comic. Please follow her on Instagram at Laura Walton Illustration as she has a unique style for graphic novels and her colours are eye-catching and beautiful. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my time lapse of Briarios from Appleseed Alpha and I'll see you next time. Stay thirsty.